Hello my friend, I am pleased to welcome you to this channel. This channel facilitates a lot of .NET lessons for Blazor WebAssembly, Blazor Server application and also .NET Mari application. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to change user role or delete user from Blazor Server application using individual account. So what are the objectives of this video? So by the end of watching this video, one, you have to be able to see all rows. Two, you have to be able to see all users who have registered into the application. And the third one is you have to be able to manage, either edit or delete each user with each row. These are the three objectives that you must focus on or you're going to focus on when doing this project. I've made a video already on how to assign role to a user as soon as you create the application. Now, um, we use individual account when creating the application. And aside from that, we assign a role, either an admin or a normal user to the person. This time round, we did not use any custom authentication state provider. We use a default one since we choose the default authentication system and that is the individual account. If you have no idea in doing this, please, I'll link this video under the description. So please go in there and I'll check that up. This here is going to continue on that video that I made. Maybe you're an administrator. You want to change the role of a user. The use case for that video was, or for that project was, the very first person who registered the application must be the administrator. Either your name starts with admin or it doesn't. You are still going to be registered as an administrator since it is the first time of creating the administrator's role. Aside from that, any other person that comes to register will be assigned the user automatically. So this time around, what if maybe the administrator want to assign another person as an admin? Is it possible? Yes, it is. And in case the administrator also wants to delete a certain user from the system, is it also possible? Yes, it is. And that is what you're going to have a look today. So please keep tight and now let's, let's um, move on. Now, this is the old project, the first video that we did. So normally, if I decide to log in, um, it's going to pop up and tell me the kind of a role that I have. So although you see, I have an admin at Gmail and I'm going to have this, right? And there's an email and that is a password. As soon as I'm logged in, it's going to pop up and tell you if this email is associated with administrator role or not. So this is going to be the administrator. So you are assigned to this administrator role and you can do all stuff that administrator can do. As you can see from me, hi, admin. Now, the second one was let's log out. I tried to use another um email let's try this and see so you see this also assigned to a user so the first email was a person who registered first one aside from that the rest have been assigned as um user all right so let's first do this we are going to create um a form or a razor component and going to name it as administrator and we're going to um, restrict this to only admin. So this person, as soon as he logs in, can't see that button unless the person's administrator because administrator can delete user. Administrator can also change role. Okay, so I'm going to close this or we can just keep this. I'll just move it to the next screen. All right. Sorry, you can't see that screen yet, right? When it's time for you to see, I'm going to pull that one onto this screen. Okay, so don't worry. All right, so um, the first thing that we are going to do here is let's first create this razor component and we're going to name this as administ administration. Well, you can name it anyhow you want it. Okay, so let me close all these. Close all tabs. Then let's go to Solution Explorer. And let's see. So, you know, uh, before we get into that, we create this project or this template or <laughs> component. Let's see. The only thing that we did in the last video was to handle this in the index page. So this is all that we did. All right. 
So although I'll put this in the GitHub so you can just go through this, but I'm not sure I'm, I'll, I'll go through this again because if I do that, it means I've gone through the that video inside this video and it's going to waste a lot of our time. So yes, but as you can see, you can see we are creating some rows and we are creating some um, users over here and that is all the magic that it is doing. As soon as the person registers and tries to log in into the home page, you know, it is happening in the index. So everything happens here. Okay, so let's now go in there and we can even use this counter because you have this page here. Um, let's use this counter, but we know we have to terminate this first. And now the name of this as administration, we keep that and let's change the route of this. So the route is what's going to be used to navigate to and inside of the counter is administration and also you want to decorate it with this an authorized attribute when you do this authorized attribute it means only authenticated users can access this and even within those authenticated users we are checking the role unless you are suited with administrators role before you can have access to this <laughs> that's very fine so i'll just have to pass in here like this is administration Okay, now let's clear everything here because we don't need them. All right, so now with this, if we try to run this up, let's see what's going to happen. Since we are, we have this, we are going to run this application, we're going to log in, but our role is not going to be authentic administrator. We're going to have a normal user. Let's get to that and see what's going to tell us, although we authenticated. So let's log in. So first of all, let's use this as a user account and now let's log in here. Yeah, so you can see we are user here. So with this user, let's try to navigate to that route and it is slash administration. Oh, I wanted to, to just go in there and grab this. Okay, so slash administration. Now you see we are authorized, but you see it is saying they are not authorized. Let's log out and now let's use the correct one. So the real administrator, all right, this is a real one. The first one was a fake. So let's use the real one, yeah, administrator. And now you see, let's now navigate. And you can see administration, we are in. So this first use case is working. Okay, now let's go to the next one. So with this, after doing this, the next thing that we're going to do here is we want to create a list. We want to display the every row that we have in the database. We want to also display all the users, right? Because for administrator, you cannot do, we cannot do restrict this. But for this, this administrator, it is super admin. So all the staffs, this person can perform it. So let's have the first thing is display the number of rows that we have. So let's create our code behind. Is it code behind? Yeah, I don't want to say code behind. Now we're going to create a list of this identity row. All right. But before we do this, I want us to inject or put something inside this, the import.razor file. That's going to be the namespaces that we're going to be using all over. So let's use solution. You go to this import.razor. And on here, do like this. Okay. So just pause the video and I'll try to type this. This is just a namespace which contains this. All right. So this is the actual thing that we need. But this is deriving it from <laughs> these guys here. So that's why I need to add them. So we need identity user for all users. You need identity role for all roles. You need authentication state provider. This time around, it is not a customizer because we don't have customized. We're using the default one. And here it has a method of get authenticated users. So we can get all the users from this guy here. And here, this is going to use for displaying an alert. You're not using any, any, um, model. You're not using any pop-up. You want to use this default JavaScript alert. Okay. Maybe if, we, if you want to do that, you can just, 
uh, have a way of doing that and i've made a video on that too maybe i'll put it in the description so if you want to display pop-up in some of the js uh, you're good to go you can do that as well all right so now let's put this after we having this now let's go back save this don't forget now let's go back here and let me just save this close this open it again So you can see it is in a, in a light green uh, or deep green yeah green color uh, so um, we have a set and the object here is row so it is a container we are initializing it meaning it is now ready to accept anything that we pass in so far as it matches with the the mother entity here as identity row now in the same page again we are going to extract all rows so to do that let's have we can have one simple method to load all rows from the application remember that we added all this row in the first video so here we are going to extract them so get all rows now if we check this we have let me just comment this for now we are saying if row contains any data, please clear it before it, it gets ready to accept what we have here. Get the whole rows from this row manager and I'll loop through them and I'll add one out one by one to these rows. This is all that we need to do. Okay, very simple. Let's save this. Now let's create our script here. Um, to loop through this row and then display them one after the another. So we're going to use container flu. We're going to use a row column MD6 and then a card to do that. Let's check it up. So from this, we're going to have something like available rows. So let's have our div and this our class. So this is container flu. These are our bootstrap classes. We're gonna have our div, a class, then this is row. Okay, so we have column MD2. We want to divide them into sections. So we have this MD2. The header here it is our available rows. Remember that we are using card, and there's a card body. So you can see we are looping through. We are saying that if this row dot count is not equal to zero or is greater than zero, then my friend, please loop through it. And I'll get it. Now, the reason why I, I made this int i equals one means I want to unnumber them. So in case we have 10 rows, you want to have number one, number two, number three, up to 10 rows. So you can have the quantity. You don't want it to be counting it yourself. You want to just have an ID to each. Okay, so I plus plus. Anytime that it loops, you're going to have an I plus plus. You're going to increase it by one. All right, so this is a simple thing that we're going to do to display or to extract the rows from the application. Now let's get it uh, seen here. So administration, refresh this, and we must have the row. So let's save everything. And oh, 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 oh. so refresh is not working. Um, there's a, is it refresh? Hot reload. Now let's reload it ourselves. Okay, so let's log in again. You know, this it doesn't store the token for long. It is a session storage. So um, quickie storage as soon as the session is over everything gets cleared okay so at the time if you run this application again we need to log in as far as the, the browser stays open you are going to log in but as soon as you close the browser and open it again take note you have to come again now let's navigate to the same page as administration and now you can see we have this in the available rows right i think we don't have any row is that so okay we have the method called the method here but we haven't called this method so here you know this is we can make it as void because it's returning nothing and now with this method this is what we're going to do we have to use one page lifecycle method and that is a um, on page initialize so when the page initializes we want to call this method here Okay, so let's call this method. Now let's see. Uh, let's refresh it again. I think so. All right, so let's reload. Okay. 
All right, so you can see we have the rows over here. We have administrators row, and you can see we have a user row. Now with this, how do we know it is the same that we asked for? When you check this SQL Server object, we have this um, demo. This is a database demo, simple blazer, user, and role manager DB. When you go to database, not data table. Now you can see we have these are the rows. Right click on this and now click on view data. And you're going to have all the rows in here. So you can see we have only two rows. And that is what we have in our application. So we've gotten this, right? Now let's get available users. Anyone who has an account in this application, let's try to push that person out. So when you check this ASP.NET users, open this in the view data form. And you can see that we have only two users here, admin one and admin. The, the last one here is the administrator. And at the very first one here, it is the normal user, right? Let's try to display these people inside the application. Administrator doesn't have to go to this table to see, okay? The database table here is going to be locked. And I'm not sure that administrator would like to come here and see all this because he doesn't know, he doesn't have any idea of this. But you, the programmer has it. So this is what we're going to do. We want to display everything in the user-friendly format for the administrator to see. Now, let's go to the same page. And that is the administration page, component or razor component. Now we have this. It's a matter of making a duplicate of this. And I'll extract it here. So let's first create a list to handle the identity user. So here too, we're going to create a list of identity user. This is the first one, identity row. So a list of identity user, and we name it as users. Let's create a simple method to load um, users from the database. So this, this is the method. So load the user from the database. And now this is a matter of making a call to this. So let's grab this and let's paste this here. Close this. Since this is an um, async, so let's make it as an await. As soon as you make this await, it means you have to make this async as well. And now uh, this is supposed to be over a void. It must be a task. As soon as this is task, it means the name of this uh, page cycle must be an async. So you make sure you put them together to stop any error that may pop up. Okay, we're going to call this method later on. So here we get all the rows, all the users. We look through like see, it's the same thing here so you know to talk about this right the same idea the same approach <laughs> okay so save this and we have that now let's have this method to look through them and display it on the screen for us so i'm going to copy this from here and it's like making a duplicate of this and changing the variables in set here okay so there's the end of that the first one for the user row and i'm going to paste this here and this is going to be for this uh, available users so if you check this, you can see we are looping through them and displaying it one after the another. We are using this um, UL another list. Okay, so we're gonna have the list displayed. Okay, now let's run this to and see if it's going to pop up or we need to hard reload it. Let's manual reload. Okay, so you can see it, it seems like this took short time to <laughs> pop up to come, isn't it? Ah. Well, let's see. Now let's log in again and okay, the same thing. Now that's the reason why I like this uh, um, Microsoft Edge. You can see that it automatically populates and sets everything for you. So log in, it keeps the data for you. Normally, normal browsers keep only the email. The password need to fix it. Or do you have any browser that can do that? Uh, well, let's see. That's why I love this in, in, in the development process, right? So try to use Edge. The new one, okay. Now let's wait for this to get logged in. Hi, admin, you're welcome. Thank you. Now let's navigate to the same page. Administration. Oh, so we got it, right? So you can see we have two users here. One is definitely admin and the other one is user. How would you know? So the next one here, we're going to have a table. Now this table is going to have the admin, the, the username, the row and gonna have an action. Do you want to delete it? You want to change the row? It's gonna ask you a question, right? Then maybe that question gonna use an, an icons to do that. Then when you click on the icon, if you want to delete it, you got to delete it. 
if you want to change the row we must populate the row here and i'll push it up to you to choose any one that you want but first of all we have to fill that um the list here with the current row that you have do you think we can do that yes we can okay let's let's get to that now once you have this the let's go in there and create this so first of all let's create a model maybe you're going to ask me what i'm going to use this model for let's create it when we are done you're going to understand this so let's create a class and maybe this class i will say user details because you're going to handle the username and its role user details maybe you can name it the way that you want okay you can even put in your name there <laughs> oh yeah okay that's for fun okay so let's see now with this user detail class this is what you want to have maybe you can create an embedded class um the same class in here but it's a good idea to put it somewhere like this we have a username we have the user role so this is what you're going to do when you check the output here you're going to go for this user check the row and i'll add it so this one is going to handle the going to join these two forms tables together okay so we can edit them you can know that this person is suited to this so we have this now let's get back to the administration table and we're going to create a list of this because maybe you have a list of you have two um, users here so maybe it's a list you can add more users as well so we need to populate as a list so let's create a list of that user details and we initialize it into a new container ready to accept so we have it list of this and we give it a name as user details so you can see this is user detail and this is users details <laughs> we just added only s to make it different okay now once we have this this is what we're going to do let's try to populate this user detail so we're going to add a class a simple class down here to populate user details and now this method it is going to accept a list of users clear the container in case it has a data already then populate the user including username and row by looping through these users when you look through these users then we can now fetch the user row from this user manager you know we have the rows stored here so we can fetch them from the rows here but well we can also fetch them from this because when you go to this get rows async there is a default api that we can call to get the row of that specific user okay here you have all the rows accumulated so we might not know which row belongs to each person but when we get in this we pass in this specific user and we can now get a person's role so it is advisable to always call this user manager anytime that you want to get a role unless you have gotten the role and now save it somewhere corresponding to each user and each role right so we get this and now you can see we are adding since we are looping through we add it anytime that it loops so we add a new user details we provide a user name here and now the row the reason why we're using first or default here is it must be a list one user may have a list of rows when you check the name of this it is get row it's not get row get row so it is returning a list as you can see it is returning a list i list here so with this list we have to loop through one because you know this row our system is assigning a row to individual one row one person so when you get the first one defaultly it's going to get the, that that row and now assign it to this and it is in the string format so this is also a string they're good to go string plus string making string then we move on okay so the reason why we have to we did not call this method inside this payload here is this method needs a payload that's a list of identity users we have already method that is going to load users so why won't we put this the output of this method as an input to this method so we can call this method as soon as this method also loads 
or finish execution. That is a good idea. So it is a dependent. It is depending the output of this. The output of this becomes the input of this method. Okay, so let's await it here. And now we pass in the output. So you see, we pass in this user here. This user is coming from the list of this user manager. When we look through and then populate these users, place this container to pass on to this. So it can also work. So we call this method in here and it works. So anywhere that you call this load user method, remember that it's a chain. As soon as it's finished execution, it's going to also call this. Then this is also going to populate it and I return. Okay, that's what we will need to do. Now let's go to the list and um, try to display the content that we have. And we're going to also use column MD6 to handle that. You know, the whole column, we want to check the bootstrap um, principles. The whole row is going to have 12 sections. So we have two, we have two making four. So we can also have six making 10. So you may have, you're going to have an extra two. Okay. That extra two, I'm going to give it to you for free. Take it. <laughs> okay. So take it and use it. Now we have column MD6. You see, we have the same card header as manage users. Uh, manage users with their rows. You can even add that. And you can see we have this table header. We have the first table. We're using a, a table class called table stripe. We're going to have one line clear, one line background. <laughs> what we get to you understand. I'm not good in color, so. <laughs> but that color, I think, is, is ash. <laughs> when we get there, tell me if I'm wrong. Now, let's see. So from this, we're going to have a T body. Now, the T body, we're checking if the list here. Remember that this is users. Take note, it's not a user. Not a single object. There's a list of objects, as you can see from here. List. We check that if the count is not equal to zero, if it is greater than zero, then please loop through it and now here display the data. Row with eight column. Username with eight row. Then append this to it. Get us an um, icon, two icons. One is pencil, one is trash. You see, as soon as you see pencil, what, what happens to your mind? What comes to your mind? Is it right? Yeah, that's an edit. Am I wrong or you are wrong? It is edit. When you see trash, what comes to your mind? Ah, it's a dust. Okay. So you want to remove it. You want to delete the user. Use the trash. You want to edit the user. Use the pencil. And we call a method edit user and also delete user. We pass in the whole object. There's a current context. So you pass in the context here. Remember that it's a context for this. We pass in this. And now we set the title to change. We add a name, change that person's role, and also change this. Saying this is an icon, it is not an anchor, that's an A. You won't have that uh, hand symbol. So you want to change the style, Keza, we set it to pointer. So it is going to put it a pointer to that icon. All right, we must have this method here first. So but before that, let's create that method that we can run this application and see. So we first going to have one method for edit and one method for delete. So let's handle that. Down here, let's handle this first. And you know, it is coming in with what? This object. So user detail object. So that's why we handle that. Now let's handle the same thing for this delete user. It's also coming in with this object. So let's also handle the same object. Now let's go to the base of the application. Then here, let's paste in this. I believe you are following along, right? Yes. Maybe you can let me know if I'm rushing for you. Maybe next time on, I'll take it slow like a snail. That's a punchline, slow like a snail. Okay. Okay, all right, so we have this. Let's save it. Okay, let's, you want to make sure that there are no red lines here. Now let's refresh this and see if it's going to work. If you're not, then we need to manually reload it ourselves since we are we've added a new method. Let's do this. Okay, so we have this set now. Let's log in with the same administrator role. So we are in. Now let's navigate to the same page. Okay. Wow. 
Is it not beautiful? Yes, it is. So check this. We have the username, we have the user role, and you have the actions here. Yeah. So what do you want to do? Do you want to you see we have the pointer? Pointer, right? Admin role is the first one, and the row here it is users. This person is for administrator. We have this. So do you want to edit? Do you want to delete? Now when you put this, let's check if I hit on that, it's going to return this. Put here. Put that. Now let's go again to the page. Now for the edit, see the row is user. There's the admin one. Click on this. Now let's check it out. You can see we got it, right? Hmm, okay. Let's close that. Continue on. Let's check for the delete. Administrator. Good. So let's check it out. Oh, fantabulous. We have it. Okay, so our method is all working perfectly as expected. Now the next to do here is let's see. Now, if I want to delay this, is it possible? Let's first handle the delete first. Okay, let's handle that. So let's close this. If I want to delete it, I want to call a simple method to remove it. Now this is what I want to do. We check if this model is now, then return. But I'm not sure there'll be a time whereby you can call this method and the model is going to be now. Because before you call this method, you must hit on a icon here. And before you hit an icon, you must have this record. Well, unless maybe application is hacked, then we can maybe call that method without clicking. So maybe we can just handle that. Okay, it's, it's advisable to prepare yourself for future. What's going to happen? <laughs> but we don't know yet. So let's maintain that. Now this is what we are doing. So we have this model here in case it is not then return. Okay, but in case it is not, it's advisable to uh, at a time make a confirmation before deleting. Because you know that maybe um, unfortunately your hand could even just press it up. Maybe you're trying to edit it and uh, mistakenly you click on that. So in such case, if you don't use a confirm box and it gets out, as soon as it gets deleted, there's no recovery mode that a person can recover. Although you can implement a recovery mode, but how many often do you want to set a recovery mode for this? Okay. You don't want to do that. So you want to ask the person, are you sure my brother, my sister, you want to do this? If the person confirmed, then it means that yes, he's assured of doing it. So that's what you want to do first. We make sure you can see we're using a confirm. This is just um, a JS script that we are using. We're passing the name of this using this interp. So here we are using this in, uh, interpolation. We pass in this dollar sign and you cannot have access to the name. In case it is false, this must return true, right? In case a person clicks on yes. But in case it is no, I mean it's going to be false. That's the opposite of this true, that is false. Then don't do anything, return. But in case it is true, then find the user with the email from this user session, user manager. So we have the email from this, get it from the user manager here. And now this user manager contains all the user names and their roles. So get it. And now first, Delete it. You see? So we use this delete async. Delete this specific user from the user row. Now, when we are doing we are done with that, we don't want to call this method again. Maybe we can decide to load this. Um, we have to, have to decide to load this user row and also this um, use, load users again. Maybe we can decide to remove it. So you see, there's a list that we have. So instead of calling this method to also populate this list again, it has been populated already. So with what we do here is just remove from this list. Okay. But it doesn't make sense because we have this load users here. Now this load users is going to automatically call this as soon as it is done. So removing this from this is like, it's going to make it twice. This is going to remove and we're going to check this again and uh, load it again. So we can just clear this off. Okay, so this shouldn't be a wait. Now we call this method to load all rows again. Then we load users again, whereby the user is going to also load the users again. Then we can now call this status change to refresh the whole application. Now let's see. So I'll save this. 
and let's refresh this page again. All right, so before we move on, we log in, I want to just pause the video, take in some water and I return. So you can also do that. This is a break time, All right? So let's go for a break, we return soon. All right, thank you, my friend, for giving me that short time to just take in something, you know? Food is important, right? And also, it's taking water all the time to keep you healthy. All right, so now let's log in and check it up. So I'll click on the login and let's hit on that button. So we are in. Then we can just navigate to the administration. Okay, now let's delete this user. We don't want to delete the administrator. Let's delete the user first. So now let's see. Are you sure you want to do this? Let's click on OK. And we say it has to remove from this because this method is going to be called. This method is going to be called. And now it's going to, this one is also going to be called. So three methods are going to be called together as soon as the process completed. So we can see we have it. And now let's go in there and see. Maybe it has been removed from the graphics. But when it go to the database, it might be still available. Let's check it out and see if it is actually what we expected. Okay, so this, these are the rows, right? We are not removing any row. We have the row. But talking about this user, this admin one shouldn't be existing now. Dead by now. Let's refresh and see. Whoa, fantabulous. We got it. You see, we're able to delete it, isn't it? That's right. Now, that is it. Now, let's go in for the edit. So, before we do that, let's add a new user to this. So, register. Let's register the same person, admin1. The password, we're going to use the same admin1 password. Admin1. And now, this is admin at 123. Let's register. Confirm this. Now we can just log in. So let's register another one. And this is user at Gmail. And now let's have the password here as the same admin at one, two, three. Admin at one, two, three. So we are registering two users addition to the admin user. Now let's log in each to assign a role for us. This is a user. So we are logging in this. And you're going to assign a user, right? User has been assigned. Let's log out. Now let's log in to this admin one, which also going to be assigned as a user. Yeah, so also user. Now we have all set. Now let's navigate to, so now let's log out because you are not admin, so you can't have access to the administration section. Now let's choose the admin. Let's log in. Okay. Now let's navigate to, the administration section and now you're going to have the users here you can see these are the rows user 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 okay we have all the available users here we have the rows now let's go in there for the edits so for this edit we want to since you're going to have a text box um, to display this and we can now choose a row we have to create a component so let's create one component here and i'll name it as update user page so razor component the name is update user page and now within that update user page you want to have this so you can see we are using this if so here it return is a boolean so return that true or false okay so we're going to hide we're going to play between hide and seek hide and seek hide and seek between this so we see we're using the same card we're going to provide a car title and in the car title, we are creating a, a variable here and all these are parameters, meaning they are going to be called, they're going to be provided anywhere that you call this component. So this is a reusable component. So this component can be used anywhere. Okay. You can use it anywhere, whether in .NET, Mari, Blazor hybrid application, or even the same component or creating another project, you can use this component also because all the methods can be called outside. Now check it up over here. This is what we are doing. We have this div class as form group from the bootstrap section. 
Now, um, we have this input test box. These are the native Blazor inputs or controls. So you can see we have the band value. And this value, we are having this user details and a user name. User details over here, you can see there's a parameter that is coming in. And as soon as it gets in here, we're going to uh, provide the user name here to this. And we are using this data annotations and the validation summary to get it. You make sure you don't click on the send button and send an empty text box, passing something before you send it. And this is what, so here we are using an input select. So normally, you're supposed to use maybe a drop down. So this is a drop down, right? You're not using any third party control, using the, 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 the native one, not the default one. And you can see that's it. So this is going to handle the, the bind value here for this row. And in that, we have this option to get at the list of rows that we have in here. We have a label on top, select row. And within this row, we are going to look through it and I'll specify the value and now the name. The value is what's going to retrieve and store to database or to anywhere. But this time around, if it's a row, the test must be the row and then the value must be the row. Normally, the value must be the, um, the number, right? But for now, you want to maintain the row since you're going to use the row manager and the user manager to get it. Now we look through it and that is it. So this is for validation and we have the submit button. So it's just a two form that we have. When you come here, you see we have this object container, that's a user detail as a container. That's what we're using as a model here. And if I click on this handle operation, there's a method. I create an event callback. This event callback, as the name implies, event callback, meaning this event can be called back anywhere. So anywhere that I call that event is going to navigate to this page and I'll trigger this. Okay. So if I call this event, it's going to trigger this. And now when it triggers this, it's going to return this user data because this is a method or it's, a, it's an output, right? That it is returning. So you have to pass in that and this is going to come from the object here. Now this object here, it is what is holding whatever thing that we put in or we select here. I believe this is clear. Okay. Then that's what I want to do. And here that's a show update page. So you can see it's a Boolean either show or hide. This is a card type that you need to provide to set a name to this. And now there's also a list of row. Remember that here we are looking to the row. So meaning that you have to provide a list of row to this component. All right, we have this set, that is all. So let's save this. Now let's use this in the administration page. So in the admin page, we are going to use this. But before we use that, let's create an also a section. So you can see we have this as, this is two, two, and now six, making 10. So meaning we have extra two. But when you pass in four, we need two to make that row complete. But here it is four. So this is going to come to the next line. And you know, we have to input this component. And now all these are the, the parameters that we specified inside. These are the parameters. Remember that these are the parameters that we specified here. And that is what we are calling them outside. Now this, we have to create a class. We have to create a parameter here, which looks the same as, which has the same data type. So we must have this. Let's handle that first. So let's handle the card. You come here and let me give a space. I know there is just a, a string for the card title. So to handle this card title, we have the Boolean. Remember that there's a show update. So we have to handle the show update. User details here, it is what? It's a user details object. So let's create an object for that. And that object, we must initialize it to now. So to new. So for this object too, we got it set. Now, this is the object. So here, this must be user details model okay so okay so this is the list we're not talking about this we have this list set already so this is the user details model so let's grab that we paste it here so this also set now this is the rule so we need to also provide rules for this let's first talk about this handle operation so there's a handle operation here let's create 
a method. Now you know this handle operation event callback, it is returning this object. So we need to receive that object peacefully. So we create this, then we see we are receiving it as a payload. That's the user detail as a model. Okay. Now let's handle this this row. Now with this row, this is what we are going to do first. Let's create a list of this because you know this row we're going to handle only the name. When you check the output here, you want to just display this rows. This is the row, so only two, and all these are strings. So we can create a list of string, right? A list of strings to handle that. Now let's put this top here. And just a list of string we call it at user row so this stops making noise all right but we have to also populate this how can we populate this and you know this for the row so we can populate this whenever we are looping through the rows here so this is a row see a load rows so we can now add this so anytime that it loops make sure you have this row added right so this is what you're going to do let's clear this you make sure this is contain data then place clear make that container ready before it receives any row name here so in such case we are populating the row and we are good to go all right now once we have this the next thing that we can do is to handle this the operation so in case i want to remove in case i want to update it you know here user cannot add a new user a new user has to be added or registered by him or herself because of this. You know, when you check this update user, the user must provide password, confirm the email, you must provide phone number. In case you want to do all stuff, you, the user must provide this. Okay. And you cannot set a password for anyone. So the user must first register the application. Then you're going to be assigned as a user. Then you, the administrator, comes in here and I'm trying to change the person's rule. Or you can delete the person from the application in case maybe the person is a hacker or doing something bad to the system you can just remove it so our focus is not adding a new user rather deleting or changing the role of the user as the title of this video implies i hope this sets and done thank you so let's move on all right so that's the last method that we need to do don't worry okay we're going to finish soon that's the last one taking some rest and for the video taking some rest if you think you are tired and now let's come back. But for me, I have energy to, to, to finish this or to complete this video. Now let's see. So we go back to the administration. And where we have that method called, let's have the definition here. We also check if it is now. Normally, I don't see the benefit of this. But you know, for programming, you have to actually follow some rules. So you have to check. Make some check, 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 checks. And to protect, to prevent future errors. Now let's check if the email or the, that's the username, if it exists. So find by name async, passing the email here. And now in case it is null, it means the username doesn't exist or the user has not registered yet. So the person needs to register. So in case I click on this and I pass in, instead of this username, I decide to pass maybe admin10 at gmail.com and I'll assign administrator and click on save. No. Nope. This user is not found. The person hasn't registered to the system first. The person must do so, right, before you can have access to it. Now, but in case the user is found, then remove the old rule and assign the new rule. This is very simple. But you know the right thing that the first thing, the thing came to my mind, or when I was doing this, I encountered an error here. The reason is, you know, as soon as I click on edit, I'm going to have the old rule, right? So let's see. If I click on edit here, I want to change the row. So this is the old row. So we must cache this row somewhere else. So that as soon as I want to update it, I can get the old row. Because if I click on edit, I'm going to choose a new row here. So how do I save this old row? So I can just remove it from the database and insert a new one. That's the reason why we need to create a, a cache object. And here, that's why I made it as cache string. So it is just a private string and the aim is to store the old row. So check it up here. I just have to put it on down here. And that is a cache user row. It's empty initially. And here, let's see. As soon as I click on the edit. Oh, so for the edit, you have to pop it up. 
So for this edit, we have to display that first. And we can now retrieve, remove the, this is a row, okay? So there's a user and that is a row. Remove the old row and now assign the same user to a new row. That's the one coming in. I hope this is very simple. Now let's handle the edit. I forgot that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So maybe you, if there's a live session, you could have asked or you might have asked, oh, why are you not doing this? Now, are you not doing this, Fred? Don't worry. I see it myself. Okay, so let's see from this edit. In case I want to edit it, what's going to happen here? Let's first check if the model is empty, then return null. But in case it is not, then you see we have this container here. And this container is what we need to process. So this container, this is not, this is not the list, talking about this, user details. And that's what we are supplying to this component, right? So if any data is found here, definitely it's going to also be found here because one container using two instances, okay? So we have to first, we make sure we set that to, we, we prepare the container by setting it to new. In case that container contains some old data, then set it to new. Aside from that, set this container to the current content, the current object that is coming as a payload. Then the cache row, set it to the current object row, and I'll keep that. So this doesn't change. Now from the car title, we set it as update, we pass in the name of that user, and I'll set the data. Then we set this show update page to true. Okay. Show this update page through. That is what we are doing here. All right, so let's save this all. And I believe we are good to go. That is all that we need to do. So let's save this. And I believe let's refresh this application again. And now let's set it up. So we have three users now. Let's log in to the admin. So let's log in. But one thing I forgot to do here is let's go to the the nav menu. Now the nav menu, we want to just add one link. So so we can we won't just be navigating to the administration all the time. So maybe we can just put it somewhere else in the shared folder, nav menu, last end. There's the end of this. So let's paste this and i'll change this to administration and i'll just there's a link administration let's see in case it's going to pop up okay so we are admin now i'm sure unless we refresh this as it didn't pop up okay let's do it again all right so i can see you have this now if i click on administration it tells you that I'm not authorized it means you have to authorize it and if you don't want to display this at all, then we can use the authorized route view. That's an authorized view, right? To decorate this. And this one is not show at all. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to show it. Okay. So not authorized. Now let's log in. As the admin, the boss of the application. And now if I click on this while I'm an admin, I know. Thank you so much. Now, if I click on administration, yeah, you see we have it here, right? Let's change this admin here. Let's change this to admin, right? But before that, I want us to see something. Now, if I log in as admin one, let's check it out. Okay, admin one. Although I could see this, if I click on it, not authorized, right? Because I'm not administrator. Now, log out. Now let's set the row. Let's change the row. So this is the main admin. So now the main admin wants to add another administrator so the person can activate people and do a whole lot of stuff for him. So with this one, I'm going to click on this and now the pop-up is going to show, right? So you can see we have the card title, update this data. You can even set update the person's row. Now with this, if I decide to change any of this, maybe 10, and I return save. And myself, sorry, needs to register first because it is not found. All right. So maybe you can also um, set this to. You can change the test box into just a label because you don't want to handle the username. So there are so much, a lot of modification that you can do.
but for now let's maintain this so you can see we have this pop-up now let's choose an administrator and i if i click on save this must get changed right so let's see so save this and you can see it has now changed to admin now let's refresh and see if it's going to stick yeah it does have it sticked now let's log out and see it's only admin that can see this let's check for this and see if it is working all right so log in now this admin comes in and say hey guy open it for me i want to do some stuff because i have a new role as admin hi admin okay so that's my new role that's fantabulous fantastic so click on this administration oh then we have it then this person can now go in there and now delete this user are you trying to do this delay this account to delay this and now we have only two admin left so in conclusion i want to ask you a question my question is did we achieve our objectives so we had three objectives to see available roles available users and also manage user let me know if we're able to achieve it or not that is it for this video thank you so much for watching please give thumbs up to this video if you enjoyed it let me know your comments as well all right and keep waiting for the next video it's going to be mind blowing thank you take care of yourself and don't worry check the github the, the link over here i'm going to give you a github link so you can just clone this application and review it or check it um, yourself if you want to also buy me coffee to support this video please i'm glad to receive it to take that coffee off yours hot one <laughs> i'll leave the the link to buy me coffee in the description so you can also do so and god bless you